Oh, you doing quite well then as well. Oh, hello. Uh, I was just playing, uh, doing, uh, doing a spreadsheet tax return, uh, writing a report, and you can do all of those things and more when you're the owner of the wonder computer of the 1980s, the Commodore VIC-20. Welcome friends, one and all, in here, out there, with me, your host, Aidan Stone, to the very last edition of The Early Show. <laughs> Yes, sir. Concentrate, boy. Sorry, sir. I was somewhere else for a minute there. I'll ask you again. Some people have said that a massive asteroid is on course to this planet, which will lead to a global disaster, kill millions, and destroy the economy. What should we do? Uh, I think we should follow the science, sir. What? Science? No one believes in science, Dactyl. Half the people think the world is controlled by some sort of magic. And the other half? As long as their tea's on the table, they don't give a monkeys. Preferably their tea is monkeys. Delicious. Now, of course we don't follow the science. We carry on and hope it will all go away. Can, can I ask a question, sir? Of course. Why does it say 65 million BC on the board when that doesn't make any sense? Have you not noticed that nothing about your life makes sense? Now you couldn't have mentioned it. You wouldn't believe what's been going on backstage. There was Lady Gaga and she'd organised this flea circus and everyone was there. There was the mamas and the papas, the barber papas, bar bar, bar barbaran and barbarella. And they'd, uh, they were all there and then the, this bloke from Queer Eye came in and he was swapping everybody's hats. And he was saying, is that better love? Are you happy now? Are you happy now? Are you better? Yeah? And then nestled in a nook was Drake. And he was saying, uh, lady, can I have another avocado pear? And she was like, Drake, man, think of the rainforests. <laughs> and I sent that in to the Daily Telegraph and they refused to print it. <laughs> they said it wasn't a suitable review of Avengers Endgames. What are you up to? Nothing. I've been looking through past shows and there's a pattern emerging. No, there isn't. I heard the Advertising Standards Committee was getting involved. That wasn't proved. Anyway, I've been meaning to ask you, do you ever get the feeling that nothing is real? And nothing to get hung about. I'm being serious, man. How long have we been doing this? I don't know, years. You see, nothing makes sense. Look, what's that switch there? I don't know, I've never really plucked up the courage to find out. It's been there all the time, hasn't it? Just flashing away in its very similitude. Turn it off. What? Go on, I dare you. What have we done? The stars are going out. Reality is collapsing. It seems that we're only a virtual construct within the computer's memory. If we don't reverse the polarity of the neutron flow, we'll be erased from RAM. What can we do? There's only one thing we can do. We must go into the heart of the Matrix and then find out what all this means. We'll need to find the CPU, the Central Purposing Unit. Uh, what's this? There's a message here. What does it say? Contact Silky. We better get a move on. It's all in the mind. Well, let's go back this way. No, this way. All right, let's split up. You do realise that's not possible. We'll become a limited company. Let's go this way. Welcome to another edition of The Early Show with me, your host, Aidan Stone, and him, Terry Dactyl. It's great to be here, it really is. <laughs> do you ever get the feeling that you're being watched? Nah, not on this show. But I do get the feeling I'm watching us doing this right now. 
I get the feeling that I know what I'm going to say next. How is that like? Because it's all written down here. It says here, and this bit. Then it says this. Then it says, show the paper to Terry. And it says it, it, says it right there. So what are you going to do about the court order? You had to mention that, didn't you? What if we are living in a computer simulation? I don't know. Carry on, find a way. Live the best life you can, do no harm. Spread happiness, spread joy and love. Search for your own personal meaning. Endeavour to improve yourself. Try to improve the lives of others. Leave the earth in a better state than it was when you found it. Raise up the next generation. Create beautiful art. Dance, sing, invent, innovate, explore. Work for peace and harmony. Just do that, I suppose. Makes sense. Look, through there, I can see someone. Who's there? Who are you? Captain Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Overlord of the universe. King of Yorkshire and Queen of Lancashire. <laughs> Backbone of the economy. Tesco value sexy. <laughs> Well, I'll just call you Silky. So, <laughs> so, Silky, great not to have you with us this morning. It's lovely not to be here. <laughs> now, May I say, I, I, I can see how wonderful you're looking. I don't know how you smell. Uh, so, <laughs> it's, it's great. Lockdown's brilliant. I'll tell you what, Everyone Adam, probably pongs. I can, re I can reassure you, I am feeling fresh. Now, uh, yes. <laughs> we, we met, probably for the benefit of, of those watching at home. We met, we met a million years ago. A million years ago, or 20 years ago, or something like that, because... You know, women's I, prison in Cambodia. <laughs> On the folk music scene, you were playing the bagpipes, and I was throwing knives at a clown. No, it was down in Oxford, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. And I, I was impressed because you'd opened uh, an Oxford comedy club in the late 90s, I'll say. And, uh, and so I went along there with my mate to have a laugh. And then I also had the honour uh, a few years after that of being booked by you to appear on said stage yeah. and attempt to make people laugh, uh, something I've been doing ever since. And um, uh, I'm, I'm going to rephrase that. It wasn't <laughs> that you were attempting to make people laugh. It, it was you were exploring what it was about wanting to make other people laugh that nourished you. <laughs> oh, we'd get, we're going down a rabbit hole already. Um, and then, <laughs> then you seem to open up clubs all over the place. Because I remember you, you opened clubs in in Leeds, I think, and then somewhere else, Reading, and and all, all sorts of places. And so, at, at, at peak, I had I was running seventeen comedy clubs and two comedy festivals. And then you, and that's you hosting a show, but also doing your own routines as well. Yeah. And doing Edinburgh and things like lots that. Lots of other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Doing a fun thing and bringing other people along. And then more recently, you, um, you've been running training workshops, um, improvisation skills, all right? Uh, Stand-up comedy, all sorts. Comedy for kids. People. Yeah. Basically, get, if you have to talk to people, it could be a school assembly, could be a thousand people at a festival, it could be, I don't know, if you're doing a speech at a wedding, or, I don't know, if you've got some homework and you've got to present it rather than writing it down and emailing it to someone. If you've got to talk to people, then if you can do that without being afraid of it, then the world's your oyster. So... So you could help people come up with better excuses than the dogs at my homework. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I wrote the homework on incredibly valuable paper, but unfortunately it was stolen by archaeologists from the future. <laughs> they, they came through a hole in time uh, and uh, also uh, at the last biscuits, which is why we have no wagon wheels and I haven't got any homework. <laughs> what are you going to do? Time traveling archaeologists. And biscuits. Again. It's perfect. It's perfect. So, um, let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, how did you get started? How did you get started in performing and why? Why did you do it? What stupid uh, did you do? 
I got started doing stand-up comedy because a friend of mine uh, thought I was funnier than I did and uh, entered me into a competition. Um, and I went, I don't want to do the competition. She said, but you're very funny. And I went, I don't believe you. And she said, well, if you don't do this competition, I will have mugs and T-shirts made of this photograph I have of you. And I went, not that photograph. And she said, yes, that photograph. Uh, and I said, what would you do with the mugs and T-shirts? And she said, just give them to people. Um, and as I didn't want people to have that photograph of me, let alone mugs or T-shirts of that photograph, I entered the competition very bravely and courageously. Um, and that was the BBC New Comedy Award in 1995. Um, and wow. I got to the final, uh, and that was my fourth gig ever. And it was on the stand-up show on BBC One. And Lee Mack uh, from Not Going Out was one of the other finalists. And Daniel Kitson and Julian Barrett from The Mighty Boosh and all other mm -hmm. people who do stand-up comedy for a lot more money to a lot more people than I do. I mean, you've got an interesting journey that you must have, being, being the performer, but also being a booker, that's interesting because that must have given you an insight into, you know, all these other performers, you know, some of them who become then colleagues, some become friends, some become mortal en enemies. But, um... <laughs> I wouldn't say mortal enemy. <laughs> I would... <laughs> the, the comedy circuit has been reasonably well self-policing and if someone's an idiot, you don't really want to spend too much time with an idiot. I mean, sometimes it's fun to spend time around an idiot because they say things like, oh, let's drink bleach. And you go, <laughs> we probably shouldn't do that. But, you know, after you, yeah, after you, you do it first and we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes for you. It's interesting you say that because I, I, I agree. I, I've always found um, stand-up comedy being an unusual um, endeavour in that, you know, you're, you're laying yourself bare, you're, you're posing yourself up for, for, for ridicule, you're standing up in front of people and you're expecting the worst. But what you usually get, as well, in my experience, what you usually get is people want you, want you to succeed. Don't they? Yeah. They're not there to shout him down. They're there to um, say, oh, I want to laugh. So come on. Yeah, that's, that's one of the great secrets of stand-up comedy or acting or singing. If people have paid money to see a show, then by and large, they want their money to have been well spent. Yeah. It's, so, uh, like, no, one, no one buys a lollipop and goes, I hope it's rubbish. It'd be brilliant <laughs> yeah. if it was rubbish, if it tastes like dog <laughs> eggs. Rolled in hair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's one of those new flavours. Chupa Chups. Snot. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, if people are invested in it, then they want it to succeed. That's a great. I mean, I, I want to start an ice cream company now and put on my van. No one heckles our lollies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Robin Hood's Bay. There's a lot of ice cream sold in Robin Hood's Bay. Bay yeah. is. It's a big ice cream town. Yeah, it, it, yeah. So it could get very competitive in uh, in in that. And um, but you, you, you've you've been praised by quite some some interesting people. I just want to re read out a couple of the testimonials, and um, that you've had, and then ask you that question: um, What is your favourite testimonial? And why? So you 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 described unusually for a comedian as a beautiful singer by BBC Scotland. So that's mm -hmm. you know, um, um, and, and, and I, I like got that. a lovely voice. <laughs> It's and, like a lark ascending. And like me, you're, you're prone to get the guitar out. And Stuart Lee said, um, a far better guitar playing that is than is required for a comedy show, which I was, I was amused by. So um, <laughs> He didn't mention anything about how good it was at stand-up comedy, but he did No, he's, very, he's been, very been playing, playing it very tactically there. But, um, but what's been your favourite testimonial that someone said to you after a gig, a show, uh, an improv session or something, and why? I've just got to sneeze, Burmese. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no bits. Good. Um, the... I think the favourite testimonial um, I got on Facebook, uh, someone got in touch... Uh, uh, that I didn't know uh, and just um, 
<laughs> I was being offered rhubarb for my girlfriend's allotment. Um, so someone who followed me on Facebook, but I didn't know who they were, um, said that um, my friend's life has been improved immeasurably by doing your comedy courses. And I thought, that's really nice to say. She didn't need to say that. And it made me, I couldn't grin wide enough, made me smile yeah. from ear to ear and past. So my uh, head must have looked like a flip top bin. So that, that, that's interesting. So, so you, it's, so we all we all like praise, don't we? All like, oh, you did a good job there, or you're very funny, or whatever like that. I'm but, always suspicious of it. But <laughs> somebody, somebody genuinely said that you made a positive Im impact on someone's life. Yeah, that's nice. Without being a doctor or a nurse. Yeah, it's worth something. Bro. Yeah, or in the fire brigade, or. I wonder what it feels like. That must must be an interesting feeling too. <laughs> I mean, you can always ask around. Ask around yeah. Take the glasses off, grow a moustache, and then say, excuse me, I'm not a from around here. Do you know the physics teacher at the <laughs> school, Mr. Inston? Has he been a positive influence in your life, or is he a horrible man who throws stones at the ducks? Okay, a little from column A, a little from column B. So... So doing doing comedy for many years and uh, and putting that into into play to try to help people. What we want people to um, we want people to have more fun in their life, don't we? Yeah. Uh, I think well, at the well, moment yeah. you look at the news and uh, it's it's pretty miserable, isn't it? I mean, uh, I, I like watching the Pathé oh, news. That's, that's my news of choice. I watch the Pathé news. Oh yeah, the, from the, the, the newsreels before the, the, the newsreels, yeah, before the main and, reel at the cinema. Yeah, because now that news is um, well, you always know it's going to turn out. So you know that if they said there's dreadful things going to happen, well, we didn't, or it has and it's long gone. So yeah. they're, they're good for that respect. But it's also good if they just the the, the, the enthusiasm they put on it. You, you know, um, you know they would say, they say, oh, people in Britain are having a great time. And uh, you can It's too. lovely eating powdered egg and straining <laughs> nettle soup through nylon tights. Yeah. But I think I, we're predisposed now to go, you know, they see the news starts and it's dun dun, something terrible. Dun dun, something going to kill you. Dun dun, awfulness. <laughs> be afraid. <laughs> yeah, the thing, the thing with the news is, I mean, you have to, you have to understand with news it's what they put between the adverts. So if they're selling you adverts for retirement homes and cases of wine, that's going to be a different sort of news than if you are the sort of market for, oh Lord, latest computer games, something on Nintendo Switch. There's always adverts everywhere and a lot of news is just designed to be put between the adverts. And what you like and what your nan likes are probably different things. Probably unlikely your granddad's bought any trainers recently. But it's possible. But it's the news is it's transient. It's transient. If you look around you and see what you can do to make the people around you happier. That is always better than reading the news or watching the news. So we, always. Just it say makes the, a difference. You just say for those at home, we're not saying don't watch the news. I mean, stay informed, of course. Um, but I think what we're sort of saying is you can get bogged down with how awful everything is and how dreadful it is and how, you know, uh, you can't achieve anything because what's the point? So I think a lot of the pressure we get from, 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 from media and from social media is you're not good enough. You're not good enough to do this. It's, it's, it's too hard or it's too dangerous or it's too scary. And, and especially in the lines of what we've been talking about, you public speaking or going out there and putting yourself forward, getting on a stage yeah. or something like that. It's, it's just way too scary. So, um, so what... It's, really, it's really not. <laughs> we know that. <laughs> yeah, we know that, but it's, take no one's word for it. Take nobody's word for it. Other people have sometimes made the mistakes and will tell you about the mistakes they've made so you don't have to. But a lot of stuff, you can fail firsthand and you'll have a lot of fun learning. Obviously, if it's kind of jumping off high things into the sea, don't do that. 
I mean, or at least wait until the tide comes in before you do that. <laughs> but how do you feel when you, you're going to go on stage and uh, uh, it's, let's say it's a bigger audience than, than perhaps you're used to, or it's a different audience, so there's a bit of uncertainty about it, you haven't been to this particular venue before, something uncertainty about it, um, and you're about to go on, what do you say to yourself, or how do you think, what do you think before that moment of you're about to start, you're going to go from off stage to on stage, how do you think? What do you think? Do you think? I, do you have a routine? If you, if you go into it with the expectation it's going to be fun, right. then you're probably right. If you go into it with the expectation it's going to be horrible and they're going to set you on fire, an angry robot wasps are going to come out your bum and try and burrow into your eyes. I mean... You probably won't be right about the robot wasps, but you might be right about it not being as much fun as you want. So it's mindset is handy. Shakespeare yeah. said, nothing is good or bad, only thinking makes it so. And Henry Ford said, if you think you can or think you can't, you're probably right. Yeah. And that's really handy to remember. A friend of mine who's really, really handy to remember. A friend of mine who's a comedian called Kenny Harris, who's sadly no longer with us, he said, uh, people said to him, aren't you nervous before you go on? And he said, oh, he got so annoyed with, the, with the, the question because it's like someone's just said the word nervous to me. That's really annoying. And uh, so he said he, to, to counteract that, he would always say, yes, because it's affirmative, I'm really excited. And, and that would override that that negativity and, and I, I, I try to say to our kids you know you're going to exam or you're going to a job interview or you're going to, to, to go to audition or uh, a, a college or an interview and, and just stand outside and think yes I'm really excited and that alone I think yeah, will, yeah. you know set you off. Nerve, nerves are just excitement you haven't got a use for yet. <laughs> Brilliant yeah yeah. I mean it's entirely plausible it might turn out so well that you're going to have to take on staff to deal with the fan mail. <laughs> it might not turn out that well, but it still might turn out better than you think. So prepare yourself. It doesn't take a lot to prepare. That's brilliant. I mean, you know, you know because we, we have been on the stage, we have uh, attempted to, with various degrees of success, entertain or educate audiences. Until you've done that, you don't really appreciate how easy it is. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's yeah. you know yeah, especially with you know, the, the improvisation part of it, which I always enjoy, which, you, which you, you've been training. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, so well, improvisation, it's just a posh word for being playful. Uh -huh. And lots of kids are really good at being playful, and the adults who are the happiest are still good at being playful. The ones who are really, really good at making money and they've got more money than they'll ever spend, but don't get to be playful. You can tell, you can just see it from the faces. Yeah. They've got so much money and none of it's made them happy. That Whereas is if you see someone playful, like I saw this really old couple, I'd say really old, I'm 45, which means I'm pretty old. I'm, I'm doing all right. I mean, if I'd been born 500 years ago, I'd be dead now. <laughs> I saw this really old couple uh, and I'd say that they were in their 80s and they were walking along and they were holding hands and they were giggling like kids and they weren't walking very fast because they were quite old but I thought do you know I'd like to I'd like to still be like that with my girlfriend in 40 years time I'd still like to be giggling and holding hands titting about if you if you lose sight of that and it can be really easy to lose sight of that because there's a lot of stuff that'll happen in your life that'll make you go, oh, I've just got bills to pay and no joy. But you can always, always start being playful again. Right. Now it that is... It doesn't cost that, anything. That is, <laughs> that is the brilliant segue into, into, into us, us formulating a task for our tutor teams, right? Um, that, is a, that is a brilliant segue. How, how can we be more playful? How can we have more fun how can we um you know i think something something you said earlier on or you we, we when we were talking before we started recording you know being funny is good for the soul for you for, for your soul and for people around yeah. you so um 
how can we be more playful in ordinary life you know so we're not necessarily booking uh, you know booking a massive comedy tour we're just just going about our business we're, with the, we're unlocking we can get out we can see friends we might see strangers how can we be more fun and more playful I like the way that your hand was vanishing and appearing again oh. and vanishing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was a writer called J.B. Morton and he wrote a column in the newspaper, I think it was the Express, Beachcomber for years and years. And oh, he was yeah. born about 130 years ago. Um, and he, he died quite a while ago. But if you look at history, then there's not a lot of fun in it. It's all facts and figures and remember this and kings and queens and this is when this law was passed so this is a bit of history we're probably talking 90 years ago nearly 100 years ago he used to walk around london with a friend of his and every time he came to a post box he'd stop at the post box and go well how did you get in there yeah. well, how long have you been in there well i I can't see a postman, I'll go and ask. And he'd pretend that there was someone trapped in the post box. Brilliant. And a crowd would gather. And then him and his mate would just slip off as the crowd were trying to work out <laughs> how to get someone out of a post box. Brilliant. You can always have fun. Always have fun. So how would you have fun? Well, I don't know. How what, would you, what would you do on a CCTV camera to make the person in the CCTV control room go? Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> As if you could do it, just walk past a CCTV camera. Well, the guys, I mean, that's, it's a brilliant thing of saying, you know, he, he, of finding an audience. So the poor, the poor people in that, in that CCTV booth, he's, he or she's probably sat there you know, looking at a bus stop <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, yeah. on a show, you know, get a puppet. You know? <laughs> yeah. If you see someone who's got on a bus, if you see someone leaving on a bus, if you wave at them like the, uh, a friend you've not seen in ages, it's like, then they'll go about their day and they can't yeah. get back to ask, sorry, do, uh, where do I know you from? You could just be cheerful to strangers and it really unnerves them. That's the power of it. The one we do at school is uh, we do a, in, in the autumn, we do a, the Smile and Compliment Club where we have to um, well, compliment cool. someone in school and we have a compliment slip to do it. So we have a little slip and we write the compliment on it and the person's name, but you don't write your own name. You don't write your own yeah. name. Then they go, into the, they go into a little box and then we dish them out at the end of the week to, um, to the tutor groups and they give them out. So you get an anonymous compliment. And it's worked really well, uh, the idea of, of a giving without any notion yeah. of, of reciprocal, of receiving, you know, just, which yeah. is what a smile is, isn't it? Because you don't get anything back, do you? So you're smiling at someone, yeah. you're giving a bit of joy, but it's not about what you get back. It's the pleasure is giving it. It's, it's back to that thing, isn't it? It's more fun to give than, than to receive. Um, well, I mean, sometimes. Sometimes it's <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, it's, yeah. it's certainly a lot cheaper to <laughs> increase the general happiness in the population. Yeah. So we've got, yeah, so uh, unnerved strangers with kindness is a phrase that we sort of came up with, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a, that would be a valuable tool for, 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 to enrich the country and the whole human race, actually, wouldn't it? If everyone went around yeah. unnerving strangers with kindness. Um, yeah, just not in a in, in a way that's going to invoke um, uh, in, you know a, the a, a, a poli the police to uh, to, <laughs> <laughs> to investigate. But um, <laughs> yeah, let's let's not let's not get the cops called on the school. I mean, yeah. But there was that. There was that. There was, that, uh, there was an amusing story of people when there was outbursts of generosity or outbursts of kindness. I mean, you might have heard of better examples than me, but there was the ones where people um, would pay for the next customer in a in a lineup of something at a petrol station, or, or or pay for the next person's lunch or something, coffee, 
or my favourite one was when a, a, a group of vigilantes broke into a into a rundown primary school and decorated it. That was that was my favourite. That's, that's favorite the kind one. of that's the kind of well regulated militia that I think <laughs> they speak about in the amendments to the American Constitution. Yeah, a well regulated militia armed with ladders and tarpaulins uh, and rollers on sticks. Yeah. Uh, recently visited a primary school in North Yorkshire and made it look banging. <laughs> <laughs> doing, doing good for no reason, you know, apart yeah. from just doing it. Yeah. So that's what we'll tell our groups then. We'll tell our groups, how can you be, how can you find the funny? Um, how can you find the funny and find that playfulness? And we'll see if we can collect some Id other ideas so we can share them. You know, how can we make, how can we feel good about ourselves or how can we make other people feel good about them? But in, a, yeah. in a, an engaging, funny way. We need a bit more funny. Yeah, and it's not all about jokes. It's not about writing yeah. jokes or telling jokes. It can just come out of anywhere. It's like water vapour in the air. Sometimes it's a brilliant blue sky and sometimes you get clouds. But there's, it's always, humour's always there very, very close. And if you can, get a catchphrase going. That's all that's what I say. You, know, <laughs> you can get a catchphrase going. If you can get a catchphrase going on a bus, then that's going to be good. <laughs> that would be a good uh, Stop the bus, I want a wee wee. Yeah. That classic song of childhood. <laughs> well, I yeah. think we're going to have to, we're going to have to leave it there. Uh, I think, I was going to say, if we've got any more words of wisdom, but I think we've probably, we've probably exhausted the words of wisdom uh, theosaurus but um we're, we're heading into summer holidays soon um what have you got yeah, planned? Yeah. How, how, you know we hopefully you'll be able to get out there a bit more yeah well that's the thing i live in leeds and i like to come to come to bay a few times a year if i can because it's it's not too far away and it's very beautiful and it's good for the soul um so ideally ideally i'd like to come to the coast well you'd be very well, welcome here you know, and uh, if uh, you know whether whether it's over the summer or, or, or in the autumn, if you're not too busy, we we we'd put on we'd, we'd put on some. We'll give you a good lunch anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I like it in the winter as well. I like it. Yeah, just like being there. It's it's nice at the edges. All the interesting stuff always happens at the edges. It's never yeah. in the deep sea or in the middle of the desert. It's always where. Always at the interfaces. Yeah. 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 Where stuff rubs together. The transitions, yeah, yeah. Robin That's brilliant because that, you've got the sea, you've got the coast, you've got the sky. Yeah, yeah. And on that philosophical note, I'll um I'll let you get on. And uh, thanks for talking to us. And I hope to see you soon. You're welcome. See if we can grab you kicking and screaming up here to to see us in person some point. That would be great. That would be great. Yeah, I wish you a very happy summer holiday. And the next time you do a Zoom call, just check your nose first because you've got a big bogey hanging out there. Oh, no, that's that's the one. I've got to place that because it's got to be there in every single show. So it's uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Deliberate. What flavour is it? <laughs> yeah. Lime, peanut butter, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, Ooh, nice. and vanilla. But, um, <laughs> Alle allergy advice from your own bogies. Yeah. <laughs> And on that oh, bombshell, well, oh, I hope you have been on the early show. Yeah, I'll have to push stop in a minute, but I just want to keep on, I want to keep on chatting to you. But I better stop it. Uh, we better let people go, and uh, all the best for what you do next. Sorry, you need to work. Please, 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 shut up!
go get you. Ha! I'm going to get you. I go to tickle you. Tickle monster's coming. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Ha! Babs, Mama Duke, shut up. I'm trying to work. No. Tell you what, mate, since it's the last show, I felt I'd better tell you yeah. that over the weeks I've come to think of you as Yeah. I've come to think of you as someone I once met. Well I think of you the same way, mate. So why do you keep going on about these Vic Twenties? I told you not to mention my 12-week product placement plan into a technology that was obsolete in 1984 and discontinued and then the company was liquidated in 1994. I'm sorry, mate. I just wanted to know you weren't breaking the terms of your contract. You had to mention my penchant for using 8-bit computers to make it easy to understand to program the instruction set of an integrated circuit, didn't you? I was just thinking of the kids. You had to mention my use of beginner's all-symbolic instruction code, didn't you? Well... You wouldn't let it lie. Well, I would have let it lie. Well, you didn't let it lie, did you? And it doesn't matter anyway, because they're for my computer programming club, which hopefully, all being well, will start again in September. But it's not even about that, is it? It's about finding something that you enjoy, something that you get, you get enjoyment from, something that you can get that joy and passion from doing. It doesn't have to be computers. It could be, it could be anything. It could be woodwork, stacking eggs or anything. So what happens to us now? Do we just fade away? Do we fade? I don't know. Do we fade away? I don't know. Maybe we're stored on a server, on a cloud or something, like, uh, like angels, I suppose. Who knows? Maybe one day in the distant future, in the year 2000, a radioactive cigar-smoking kid picnicking on Saturn will look back on this and get the same sense of warmth and well-being that we did from doing it and you did from watching it. And to those kids, the lockdown TikTok generation, we salute you. And if we shadows have offended, think but this, all is mended. That you've but slumbered here while these visions did appear. And this weak and idle theme, no more yielding but a dream. So good night to you all, wash your hands. And if we be friends, tarry here, we'll make amends. Happy, Happy times, times and places, and places to, you to you all, and good night. Goodbye.